Hello everyone, uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, I'm going to be talking about hydraulic and electric planter drive systems. My name is Corey Linhart. I work in the sales department in McPherson, Kansas. So to get started here today, uh, we're going to uh, begin with variable rate drives. So variable rate drive allows us to change rates on the go either manually or with a map based prescription. Uh, this also improves uh, planting accuracy in sandy soils or no-till conditions just because we don't have to worry about slippage, things of that nature. So one of the main inputs that we need uh, is a tractor radar speed. So there's two, uh, two options for this. We can either use a ground radar um, or more commonly we're using GPS speed. Uh, the one thing that we have to note here is if we are using a ground radar that it's a good idea to drive a 400 foot course um, to make sure that our calibration is set and we reset our wheel slip. So one of the common areas uh, starting out planning or phone calls that we, we will get are on the topic of radar um, and they're getting this warning here that comes up. So um, is what we want to do. Uh, we'll go to the planner settings, come to our sensor tab and tractor speed and is what we find a lot of times right up here in this auto checkbox that there is no check in that box and you can see here it's not detecting anything. So we're going to want to go ahead and put a check in that box um, to make sure that it's auto automatically detecting uh, for that speed. So we would want to verify that we're getting that by uh, this speed here. This is our transmission speed over here. The next area that uh, we are going to ask you to go to if that's checked and that looks OK is come to the main menu and go to your performance monitor and there'll be a check mark here um, for use radar as speed source. Once we do that, we can actually come back here and, and see that our status is OK. So the next uh, topic on our variable rate drive is our status pie. So this gives us a lot of information on why we may not be planting. Um, to start off here, our 10 o'clock pie uh, tells us that all of our sensors are healthy um, and, and we're good to go there. So that's very commonly we're going to have that piece filled in already. So the next uh, next one down uh, at two o'clock is our planner is moving and we're going to talk about that motion sensor here shortly. And then down here at six o'clock position is that our planner is lowered. And also we're going to we're going to visit on the uh, um, height sensor and some of the issues we may find there. So we also use the same icon to rotate and fill our meters. So each time we shut the tractor off. Um, or shut hydraulics off, we're going to need to refill our meters. And so each time we hit this icon, it's going to rotate the meters one half of a turn. So I always tell guys to go ahead and just push that three times. Um, that should be around and a half, and that way we make sure that our, our meters are full. So one of our kind of our favorite place to go for any kind of planning issues is this VRD data page. Um, so we go to up here to our ratings tab, bring up VRD data. Our top line is the commanded population. So you think, yeah, that shouldn't be a problem, but we've actually found a lot of times when we're running a prescription, uh, maybe there's an error with the prescription or we're out of the field and our target population at this point would say zero. So if that's the case, go ahead and just turn your prescription off, put a manual uh, rate in and see if that fixes the problem. Uh, tractor speed, we reviewed that that's got to match kind of what our uh, tractor's displaying for speed. The next item is our wheel sensor. Um, so this is going to either have an active or inactive um, reading on this page. If we do have inactive, we're going to want to come back and find one of the wheels on the planter that's got this uh, uh, tone ring. Uh, a few things to check there is that we have a two to four millimeter air gap in between the sensor and the, and the ring. Uh, one thing to be, in, be mindful of if we have a failed wheel bearing or a loose wheel bearing, uh, there's a chance that that could actually get over and damage the sensor or just be too far away. Uh, one other thing too to make sure it's clean because we get uh, we've had phone calls before where uh, we've gotten into some mud and that's filled in and it can, it can no longer read. So our next uh, our next area is the height sensor. Um, our calibration we can rate, uh, calibrate for our high and low. And if we follow our technical manual, uh, it'll it'll uh, walk us through that. Uh, so uh, here we are, uh, the position there. If we see that the planter is actually lifted up and it's sand down, we know that that's an, uh, a possible area where our calibration is off. Um, 
Sorry, I've flipped the wrong way on my page there. So there's two different versions of height sensors. Um, so we're on our 1770 NT. Um, we got this potentiometer that goes from a zero to 100% and is variable all the way through. On our mounted planners, we're going to have this push button switch, and there's actually going to be two of them. Uh, and one of the two has to always be activated, and that just makes it to where we go through a dip. It doesn't shut our planner down. Now, you will see this same style of switch on a, on a 1770 CCS planner, but it's actually just for the CCS fan. It has nothing to do with actual height. And there we talked about the raise and lower uh, calibration process. So next, uh, we're going to target down here at our bottom. Uh, so this is our uh, computer figured speed. This is actual, and this is how far we're opening our hydraulic valve in order to get that RPM. So here is that valve that we're commanding at 29% in that scenario. Um, so we're, we basically just want to make sure that our hoses are plugged in properly. We don't have uh, um, connect, electrical connection. You can see is is right behind here um, is a possible place that came unplugged if we're not planning. So just a couple of little things to check there. Uh, next one is RPM. And so uh, here's our RPM sensors that's measuring how fast that the motor is spinning. Something that we've seen in the past and is common is this small sensor right here can come loose. Um, and uh, basically doesn't report any speed back to the to the machine and it's something that's easily overlooked. So that's one thing to check there. So I'm going to go back here uh, to just give a quick scenario. Say we have 100% valve position and zero RPM and we're not planning. So there's two kind of scenarios. So the first one, it could be that we don't have the, the uh, hydraulics plugged in or turned on and it would give that scenario where the valve is opening up all the full out can, but we, we're not getting any RPM. And so uh, basically if we go back and we run this, uh, uh, run this and we see that that stain on zero and the motor is in fact not turning, we wanna check our hydraulic hoses um, and then our plug in for the valve. So the same readings, 100% valve, 0% RPM can actually also happen with what we talked about with the set screw coming loose. The only difference is we'll actually see our motor turning back there. So that's just a couple of couple of scenarios that we can use this page for to diagnose where our problem is. As far as plugging in our hydraulics for the VRD, we've got two choices. We can either go into our SEVs uh, traditionally and run them there, or we prefer to come over here to the Power Beyond and use our pressure port and our return port over here. There are some machines with an independent control valve that may use the third uh, load sense line, but typically we're, uh, we do not have that. So one of the things that we want to do uh, at the beginning of uh, each time we hook up the machine is to run this motor valve flush. Basically, this is going to flush the system of any debris that may hang up in our control valve. First thing we're going to want to do, this is going to be set on one second, so we're going to want to change that to three seconds, and then we have to be above two miles an hour speed, and then we can continue the test. And so it'll run at 175 RPMs, and we need to see that run close to that down here. We're going to want to run this test about three times in a row, and then we should be in good shape. A kit that we offer uh, are the through parts. Uh, if you take this DTAC solution 107-148 to our parts guys, they're going to be able to pull the parts to be able to mount this um, on your planner uh, if it's older than a model year 17. Uh, model year 17, they came out th uh, with this as a factory option. So the next thing that we want to talk about here is uh, uh, our quick start function on a Seed Star 2 planner. So it's basically, you'll see up here when we let a planner down, uh, you're going to see this come up and it's going to start at six and count down. We have to be moving at least one mile an hour uh, within that six seconds uh, or else we're, we run the risk of leaving a, a larger skip. If the tractor is moving above uh, one and a half to two miles an hour, Within that six seconds, uh, uh, we're good to go. If it's beyond that, then we're going to shut down planning. So a few just tips here as far as turning on headlands. Um, it, it's uh, recommended that we downshift instead of uh, reducing tractor engine speed just because we want to keep our hydraulics and everything up. Um, also, uh, make sure that we're uh, attaining more than two miles per hour um, before lowering the planter, just like we talked about. Um, and then also to start from a stop position, 
I always tell guys to, to kind of have a pretty good idea what gear you need to be in and throttle position beforehand to be over two miles an hour. Um, we don't have to be going six miles an hour in this scenario, and you're actually better off to be closer to two miles an hour, uh, achieve that for just a little bit, and then you can speed up to normal planning speed. So uh, the next area we're going to talk about is the electric drive. So the machine we have here on our left um, is, is a... Uh, uh, hydraulic driven uh, the covers off of it just so that I that we could show you kind of the drive system there uh, we do need to have a minimum of 15 engine rpms to maintain our hydraulic flow on that machine versus over here we have our PTO generation which only requires 1100 and drives off our PTO so fast start um, is basically the electric version of quick start um, on our VRD planner uh, one key difference is um, that the uh, drives engage as soon as we hit the button. So we don't have to be moving for it to start planting seed. We can start planting and we really reduce the risk of having any kind of a skip, but we will notice that it will uh, poss has the possibility of leaving a pool of seed on the ground. So kind of the sequence that we want when we're hooking and unhooking this from the machine is we want to take the alternator off separate from the gearbox. And that's uh, two reasons for that. One reason uh, this uh, generator here weighs about 75 pounds. The other reason we run the risk of damaging our uh, temperature sensor, which I'll show you here in just a moment. So here's a picture of that temperature sensor that's on the, um, on the bottom here. And you can see that there's plenty of things that we can hit that sensor on and, and potentially break it off. And so that's why we want to uh, split these off in two different segments. So uh, as far as maintenance, we're going to want to apply uh, HD Molly grease to this area, um, preferably before each crop season, um, but we definitely need to do it annually. Uh, the new machines, uh, 2020 and newer, they've added this O-ring in between there just to help contain the grease. Uh, we'd recommend that you have maybe a couple of those extra in the cab of the tractor, uh, just in case we drop one uh, when we're taking it on and off, um, things of that nature. So Molly year 18, a newer um, that had this uh, service uh, decal on them. Thank you very much. That's all I have for today.